Today, I'm addressing an issue that affects nearly all new drivers that I teach, and it's something some new drivers really struggle with, and it's turning left at the end of the road. It's the position when you turn left, not only at the end of the road, but on really sharp bends as well. What normally happens is new drivers tend to go really, really wide and end up very far from the curb, which is of course a problem because if someone's coming the other way and you're far from the curb, you could get into trouble. You ideally wanna turn left and keep it within your own lane. This is how you can do that. The problem is light and light travels in mostly straight lines on earth at least. There is such a thing as gravitational lensing, but that's not this video. That causes a problem. Because light travels in straight lines, any of the road in front of your car, immediately in front of your car, you cannot see because the light cannot curve around your bonnet to your eye. And you know it certainly can't go through your car because your car's not see-through. That way, the closest bit of road you can see is actually normally about a whole car length away depending on what shape car you're driving. But for an average hatchback, it's normally a car length away. If you don't believe me, next time you're in the driver's seat, sit in a relaxed position and see what the closest bit of curb you can see is. Look at the closest bit of curb you can see at the front window. Get out and see how far away that is. I'll put money on it, unless you have a car with an incredibly short bonnet or a bus, it's gonna be about a car length away. Don't cheat, don't do this, because that way you'll be able to see closer, obviously, because the light will have a steeper line towards your eye. The higher you are, the closer you can see. Just be relaxed and see how far away that curb is, the closest bit of curb you can see. With that information, look at this bird's eye view. You now know that the closest bit of road you can see is a whole car length away. Therefore, the closest bit of curb you can see is a whole car length away. And if you draw a line between that part of the curb to your eye, which is a straight line, because that's what light does, it travels in straight lines, you will find that the curb or the light from the curb intersects the middle of your car on the way to your eye. That means it's gonna look like the curb is next to the middle of your car, when in fact it's not. That's gonna cause you to feel like you're gonna hit the curb as you're going around that bend because it looks so much closer than it is. So you're gonna steer away from that curb, causing you to go on the wrong side of the road, which of course is unsafe. So what you need to do, which you will find probably very hard to do and quite scary at first, is to ignore where the curb is because where the curb is looks completely different to where it actually is and it's gonna vary from car to car. And that's one of the changes a learner makes to become a driver. A learner generally looks at the side of their car and they think they've got bad spatial awareness because they think, oh look, I, I can't tell where my car is. But everyone's seeing the same thing. You just can't look at it literally. You have gotta understand that your lane is big enough for a car, even though your car looks so much wider than your lane. It's ridiculous how much wider it looks if I actually look at it literally right now. You gotta ignore that. You know that lane's big enough. You just need to put the middle of your car in the middle of your lane. So how do you judge where the middle of your car is? From inside the car, you wanna drive the car from its center. Don't drive it from its sides, because I've already explained to you that's a false view. You don't actually know where the curb is because it looks like it's halfway in the window, but actually it's over there. You could use a marker and go, okay, well, if the curb is halfway in the front window, it's in the middle of the front window, then I'm close. But you don't wanna be doing that at speed. You need to be looking slightly further ahead at speed, that would be quite unsafe if you're doing that fast. It's good for parking, but not good for fast driving. What you have to do is forget you're in a car. You don't drive a car. An experienced driver does not drive their car. They don't position their car. They don't think, well, that's a tight gap. Let's put my car in the middle there. They may say that, but they're not actually feeling that. They position themselves. And that is a good transition between learner to driver. A when a learner becomes a driver, they stop worrying about the box and they start worrying about them. What you need to know is your left knee, roughly where your left knee is, or your left leg, should I say, roughly where it feels like it's standing when you're sitting in the car, is where the middle of your car is. That's in a car with a steering wheel on this side. If the steering wheel was on the other side, then it would be your right leg. But from your perspective, the leg nearest the middle of the car, where that feels like it's standing is where the middle of the car is. So all you need to do is use the steering wheel until you feel like 
your left leg is touching the middle of your lane, then you know your car is in the middle of your lane. Don't move your leg, because obviously that's not gonna work. Don't think, well, I've gotta put my left leg in the middle of the lane, let's move it over here. No, you've gotta move the car. Keep your left leg stable near the middle of the car, steer the wheel until you feel like it's on the center, and then the car will be in the center, or the middle of the car will be in the center of your lane. Most of the people I teach are actually pretty good at judging if a gap is wide enough for a car. If the gap looks wide enough for a car, put the center of the car in the center of the gap, and you should go through the middle of it. If it doesn't look wide enough for your car though, or if you're not sure, don't go. If you don't know, don't go. Not all gaps are gonna be wide enough. But one thing I can say is if you worry about the left, you will probably hit something on the right because you'll be trying to avoid the left and you'll go over towards the right. And if you worry about the right, you'll think, oh, I'm very close to that car on the right there. Let's get away from that. That's good. And then you probably hit something on the left. It can go the other way. Unusually, some people do this. They'll concentrate on the right. They rarely do this for the left. It's normally the right in the UK because you're sitting on the right. You can see where your wing mirror is and you think, okay, well, if I get really, really close to the car over here, because I can see where my wing mirror is over here, I'll get my wing mirror really close to that car on the right and hopefully the left will miss. That's not good either because A, the left could still hit if the gap's not wide enough. And B, if the gap is wide enough, what normally happens is you end up super close to the right with loads of space on the left. And the idea is to go through the middle of gaps or the middle of your space, not to one side of it. Now, if you stuck with me for this far in the video, thank you, because I know you're watching this video to find out how to go round a left bend well. And I've been talking about how to stay in the middle of your lane. But you see, the two are the same thing. If you can keep the middle of your car in the middle of your lane, you should be able to do that on a bend. The reason why new drivers struggle to stay in the middle of their lane on bends is because they're focusing on the side. If you stop doing that and stop worrying about that curb, as I showed you earlier, where someone sees they near the curb and tries to go really far and ends up on the wrong side of the road. If you can just focus on yourself and put the middle of the car in the middle of your lane as you go around the bend and not worry about the curb, you will go around that bend better. That's the key to doing this well. It takes courage and it takes practice and it is a skill because you're gonna be afraid of hitting that curb. Your driving instructor will take the wheel and push you away from the curb if you go to hit it. Hopefully they will. I certainly will. I'm not gonna let people hit the curb. That's one of our most base and basic fundamental responsibilities of the job is to stop you hitting stuff. So give it a go, try and steer, try and take the advice, try and steer around that bend by not doing the bend or the curve or the curb. Just look at the middle of your lane and aim for the middle of your lane. And hopefully you'll go around in the middle. If you do it a little bit too early, hopefully the instructor will help you and just move the steering wheel a little bit to stop you hitting the curb. This is exactly where you should look when turning left at the end of the road. Firstly, look at the middle of your lane at the beginning of the bend. I call it the mouth of the junction where the curbs do that and the road bends round. Get there first, get, the le get your left leg on the middle part of your lane at that beginning of the bend. Then look across the curb to the middle of your new road at the end of the bend. You don't wanna be looking too far up the road because you'll cut the corner too much and you don't wanna be looking too close because otherwise you won't steer enough. And then all you simply need to do is focus on that point and turn the wheel until it feels like your left leg is going to contact that point. And if you do that, the middle of your car should go to the middle of your lane. Try not to look at where the front of your car is pointing because where the front of your car is pointing isn't necessarily where you're going. As you can see in this video, the front of the car is facing a different way to where it's heading. I probably need to do a different video on that, otherwise this video will get too long. But ignore not only the sides of your car, but where the front of your car is pointing as well, because that is not true to where you're actually going. You've got to feel where you're going as a person. And just to prove my point, I've steered to the right. And if you can look from the camera facing forwards, it looks like the front of my car is facing forward. And the front of my car is facing forward but that does not necessarily mean where I'm gonna go. If I move now, my car actually goes to the right. I'm facing forward, but 
that I'm heading over there towards these garages. There is another thing that stops new drivers from turning left well, and I see this happen to experienced drivers as well. And that is when they get to the end of the road, they're spending too much time looking right to see who's coming and they miss their turn. When they get to the end of the road, they end up straight. So for example, I'm gonna go left here and I'll start staring right to see who's coming. And now I'm staring right, I can't do my turn because I can't see where the road was bending or where the road was going. So I get to the end of the road pointing forwards. And now as I pull out, I need to steer loads to make up for the fact I haven't used the mouth of the junction. I end up coming out wide into the wrong side and then having to bring it back to the correct side. I find that can be quite a challenging thing for new drivers to change because they really want to see who's coming. They want to look right to see if they can go. But you're much better off doing it this way. When you get to the end of the road, deal with the steering first. So I'm at the bend now. I'm looking left at the bend. I'm not worrying about who's coming at the moment. I've got to get my car positioned well and under control first. Now I've got the bend sorted. I'll look to the right. I can see no one's coming and then I'll pull out. If you look to the right before you do your steering, you're probably going to do the steering badly because once you start looking right, for most people, they find it hard to come back from looking right to looking at their position again because they want to know what's going on. They want to know who's coming so they can cross the line and go. As an experienced driver myself, I do look right and left regularly as I go towards the end of the road. And that's the best thing to do because then you're getting both sides of the story. You're knowing what's happening on the new road, who's coming, for example, but also you're maintaining good control of your steering and you're slowing down not too early or not too late because you're focusing on the end of the road. That way you can focus on how much to brake and how much to steer. I recommend as a new driver, you focus on that first. And once you get good at steering around the bend at the end of the road and you get good at braking well, so you're not braking too early or too late for your junctions, once you've got that good, then start to add regular glances into the right to see who's coming. It's all a bit too much and a bit too overwhelming for most people to combine all that to begin with when they're only just learning. Try and have patience with yourself when you're trying to get better at this. Most people struggle with it. If you're struggling with it, you're not alone. There are some people who are a bit more natural and pick it up quite quickly, but most people at least struggle with it to begin with and end up going really wide or really far from the curb as they do their left turn. I have found giving a lesson similar to what I've just explained really helpful and it does genuinely change and help people stay in their lane but it is challenging because it goes against your instinct. Firstly, you wanna look right, you wanna see who's coming, so that makes you look right and stops you focusing on your turn. And also, you're afraid of hitting the curb, which again, makes you wanna steer away from the curb. And even though I can get someone steering around left bends really well on a lesson, given a week of, of not driving and coming back to their next lesson, they'll go back to how they were doing it before because it's natural to do that. But persevere, and once you've done it several times over several weeks or several lessons, then it should stick and you should get the confidence to look like I am now at my junction where I'm going as I'm slowing down instead of constantly looking everywhere else and being worried about the curb. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learner insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. Well, that's all for this one. If you think the video is helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to get my future videos. Until the next one, cheerio.